this fly mainly because uh, Bear used all the different pieces. Much of the fly comes from a pheasant tail rump. And a lot of those feathers that you and I would normally throw away, he used in this fly. Anyway, we start with the Diaichi 1730 in a size 6. Third we're using is UTC 70 denier. The reason I like it is because it splits really easy and it's still pretty strong. Tie the thread in and bring it back to just above the, the barb of the hook. Now I'm going to take some, oh, what do they call them, aftershaft plumes off of, a, off of the pheasant tail, off of one of the feathers. And it's usually stuff I throw away, but uh, Bear showed you could use it. I tie in a nice clump as a tail. Now I've got a piece of gold wire and brassy size. And it's going to be my ribbing, and I'm going to tie that in next. And next what I'm going to tie in is I've taken some pheasant tail fibers off the pheasant tail, and I'm going to, I've treated it with, um, with soft text. So it's about anywhere from a quarter to three sixteenths of an inch wide. And it's going to be my shell back as well as my wing case. I'm going to tie it into the top of the hook. Right where I've got those plumes tied in also. I'll lash it down. Now I'm going to take one of the uh, aftershaft plume feathers. It's a long skinny feathers and use it for my gills. And I've taken, I've split it, and I'm actually going to double it up, meaning I've got it in half, and I'm just going to pull over both layers to get to increase the density for my gills. And tie those in. Now, for my dubbing, I'm going to use some uh, squirrel, excuse, yeah, squirrel fibers or dubbing from the uh, belly of the squirrel. It's got a little orange t tinge to it. It's, uh, it's in sulfur. So it's got a little orange in it. Take my thread, flatten it out. I've taken the twist out of it, and I'm going to split it. Drop a little bit of wax on there, just a little. And then I'm going to take my dubbing, create a long dubbing rope. You know, I tie that stuff in pretty sparse, even though it's going to be used for my abdomen knowing full well that when I twist it, it will bunch up. And also, because of the way that I'm wrapping it in, it'll be fairly dense. But I like that real buggy, wispy look that it gives because of those guard hairs from the squirrel. Now, the length of this rope when I first start off is probably around three or four inches e easily, but it'll re reduce down to about two and a half three inches. And that'll give me enough length in order to wrap that abdomen. I've got my fibers in there. Now I'm going to just spin the, spin the thread to trap those fibers in there. I'm going to dub that body by just uh, having touching wraps and bring it up to the bent portion of the shaft of the hook. Maybe a little bit further past it, though. 
You can see how buggy it turns out. I just like that. That's why I like using a split thread technique or creating a doubling loop instead of just um, creating a dubbing rope by twisting on the, dubbing onto the thread. Now I'm taking both halves of that aftershaft plume, tie it in just above the bend of the shank of the hook. Those are going to be my gills. Now I take my pheasant tail and pull it over the top, and that's my shell back. And it'll split those, that aftershaft plume. Tie it in. And make some adjustments to make sure my wing case as well as my gills are sitting properly on the, on the hook. Now I'm going to take that brassy wire and I'm going to space it. You'll probably get about four or five segments or wraps or ribs on there. And what I do is I just pull it through there and I just brush it down a little bit so some of those, ha those hairs, are, some of those hairs are going to get caught, but it stays, it, you'll see when we do the close-up that it, it pretty much, you can just brush it out. I'm going to bring that wire, palm of that wire up forward to where I stopped with my shell back. Tie off my wire and then I'm just going uh, to helicopter it off. It's amazing how strong some of those wires are. It takes a little bit sometimes to get it to break off prop cleanly. There we go. Now I'm going to take my wing case and pull it back and then I'm going to trim off that excess aftershaft plume. I'm going to bring my thread up to about an eye behind the eye of the hook, an eye's length between the eye, behind the eye of the hook, and that's where I'm going to put my bead chain eyes. These are bead chain eyes, small in black. And I just do cross wraps, three one way through the other, three again, about four or five times, and then I'll do a wrap all the way around it just to gather up those wraps. It really does lock those bead chains in really well. Now I'm going to bring my thread right back into the beginning of my thorax area and I'm going to tie in a pair of henbeck saddle feathers that are tan, that's got an orange tint to it, a sulfur tinge to it. And you can't see it off camera right now but I'm preening, I'm taking off the aftershaft plumes off of those partridge feathers and then I'm going to preen the, the feathers back so that I get a little tip because I'm going to tie them in by their tip. You can see that tip and just lash it down. Then we take both stems of the Uh, just making sure those feathers, feathers sit on top. Both of those stems and palmer it forward. They're going to be touching turns. I don't really care which way the feathers are facing, mainly because it's such a jumble. But though, though that hen saddle feathers really flows really well. It moves and pulses as you strip it through the water and as it moves through the current. You tie off those that head saddle feathers and trim off that stem. 
And I'm gonna split that thread again. I'm gonna throw a little more dubbing in there just as I did previously. So this is that squirrel belly that's got an orange tinge to it or sulfur tinge to it. Slip my dubbing in between those that split thread and create my dubbing rope by spinning it. Just adding some more twist. And then I'm going to wrap that portion right there behind the eyes. And then I'm going to crisscross through the eyes also. As much as the room as I had there, I still managed to crowd the eye a little bit. And it's mostly because I have dubbing on that thread. Now I'm just preening before I take my shell back and pull it over the wing, as a, using it as a wing case. I'm just trying to split so I have equal number of hen, hen heather, uh, hen saddle feather to the right and to the left. Now I've pulled that pheasant tail wing case over the top and I'm tying it off right in, bef in, right in front of the eyes. I will take one wrap behind the eyes just to put bunch up the material so it sits properly or the wing case sits properly. And then I'll just whip finish in front of the eyes and behind the eye of the hook. You know, I, I got a little, it's a little bug in there. There's a lot of excess material in there, but I think it adds to the fly. I'm just preening. And whip finish. And trim off my thread. Then I'm going to trim off some of that excess material. I still see that my thread is white, and so I wanted to either hit it with a done marker or an olive marker or an olive done marker. Just something to kill that white color. Now I'm just, you could always call those as feelers, but. I like it a little bit neater head, especially when I go to tie this fly. I don't want all that stuff in the mid. I don't want too much material sitting in that eye. But I think these look like mouth parts on it anyway, on the nymph. And just preening again. I take my marker. And color those white thread. This an olive or use a done or an olive done marker, doesn't matter. Just to take the shine off that white. And that's my saddleback hex. Thank you.